Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are here at 2022 Korea Gender Equality Forum. I am Kim Anna, the announcer of today. Thank you. This year marks the third year of this event, the Korea Gender Equality Forum. Uh, due to social distancing, we have to see you online. And I'd like to welcome everyone for joining us online. And thank you. Uh, for today and tomorrow, we will be joining with many different people from the government and academia to pull together the wisdom to move the society forward. Then, let us begin the 2022 Korea Gender Equality Forum. We're going to first begin by watching the themed video. 빠르게 변화하는 사회. 우리는 답을 찾습니다. 각국의 경험과 성과를 소통하고 교류하며 미래를 밝힙니다. 2021년 합계 출산율 0.81명 핵심 노동인구 고용률 OECD 36개국 중 29위 생산인구 감소 팬데믹 충격 등 어려운 현실에도 반드시 나아갈 방향을 찾는 변화를 넘어 지속가능한 사회를 제시하는 우리는 현장과 정책을 잇는 혁신 브릿지 오늘 내일의 답을 준비합니다 집단 지성의 힘으로 미래의 방향을 찾습니다 그간 포럼은 지속가능한 사회 발전을 위해 우리 사회가 함께 풀어야 할 화두를 던져왔습니다. 청년 세대의 당면 과제와 사회 안전망을 강화하기 위한 다양한 논의를 통해 포럼은 모두를 위한 대한민국의 성장을 뒷받침했습니다. 지속가능 발전 사회와 여성 경제 활동 참여 확대 2022년 KGEF는 핵심 노동 인구 비중 감소라는 위기에 맞서 여성 고용률을 높이고 코로나 팬데믹으로 가속화되고 있는 가정 내 돌봄 문제를 해결하기 위한 각국의 정책 사례와 그에 따른 성과를 공유하고 정책 제안을 통해 모두가 행복할 수 있는 대한민국의 성장 방향을 밝히고자 합니다. 모두를 포용하는 지속가능 국가 대한민국 2022년 우리는 대한민국의 내일을 만납니다. Korea's growth for everyone. We, that's why we are here together. 
2022 K Korea Gender Equality Forum is about sustainable society and expansion of women's engagement in economical activity. The achievements that we have seen and share, we are going to share what we have achieved and also discuss our way forward and light the future for Korea. We are joined by so many different expertise from home and abroad, so I have high hopes and expectations. So the first speaker to join us is the Minister of Gender Equality and Family, Kim, is Kim hyun Soo. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome her with a big round of applause. Hello, good afternoon. It looks very simple and small since we are joined by everyone from online. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Kim Hyun Sung, Minister of Gender Equality and Family. Thank you for joining the 2022 Korea Gender Equality Forum today via online. I'd like to thank British Ambassador to Korea, Colin Crooks, and the Tamara Malpini, Acting Ambassador of Canada to Korea, for sending us the video congratulatory message. Gipta Gopnitha, the first Deputy Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, and Insi Lee, President of the Korea Peninsula Institute for a Future, and moderators, speakers, and panelists today and tomorrow. I'd like to extend my sincere gratitude especially those joining us from Germany, Norway, France, and Australia who are joining us from different time zones. Thank you and welcome to the event. In times of changes and difficulties, we pull our wisdom together and try to explore our way forward. The global economy now faces a great challenge. Before even getting out of the shock of the COVID-19, global high prices and uncertainties such as concerns over economic slowdown and global supply chain crisis are increasing. Uh, with the acceleration of the digital transformation, we need to resolve the digital gap between different gender classes and age group. And we also have to nurture the talent in digital and science and technology. On top of that, Korea's fertility rate is only merely 0.81 as of 2021. So our working age population is dwindling. This morning, I went to a meeting presided by the president. We talked about the, we had a discussion about the, how to resolve the low fertility rate of Korea. In this fast changing environment, for Korea and the international society to achieve faster growth, uh, women's economic activity, especially those in the digital and science and technology, should is imperative. And also, we need to find ways, the policy-wise ways, to encourage both men and women to work together in an effective way. And that's why the Minister Ministry of Gender Equality and Family selected the theme of Korea Gender Equality Forum as the sustainable growth, a sustainable growing society, and female engagement in economic activity. Uh, and we will pull and rely on the expertise and wisdom of the expertise from home and abroad. Uh, we will, in specific, we are going to uh, see what's the efforts and limitations we have made in this area and share the need for the society, share the burden of child rearing. Uh, also, how to accelerate female participation in digital and science and technology and strengthening the women. I believe challenges comes with opportunities. 2022 Korea Gender Equality Forum today and tomorrow I hope this will serve as a platform for us to share our wisdom and find a new platform, platform to find new ways to get over this crisis. 
I'd like to once again extend my sincere gratitude to everyone here, and phys physically here, and also those who are joining online. Thank you. Thank you. We're ch child raising together. Uh, that's a future that we all are dreaming of. We, I believe we will find the answer. The Minister Kim Yeon suk opened this forum of in the two days meetings and meeting uh, with her keynote speech. Now, uh, British ambassador to Korea, Colin Kirks, is going to share, he's going to give a congratulatory speech. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking part in this event. First off, I'd like to thank the Ministry of Gender Equality and Family for hosting this event. It is regretful that I cannot be with you in person, but it, I am happy to be able to be with you online. In the difficult times, I hope that we can build a mature society, democratic society, and I'd like to commend the ministry for making all those efforts. And the gender equality that the ministry is seeking and I hope there is much more progress in this area. I believe that there is, it's very really critical to host these kinds of events. In that sense, I hope this year's meeting forum to be a success. Female success is a challenge that and pro that we have made a lot of progress over the past decades, both at, in Korea and Britain. For Canada, for Britain, uh, up until late 1980s, the so women's suffrage was not guaranteed, but the, after 100 years of women's suffrage was given to everyone, the Riz Trust, well, Trust is now selected, elected as the prime minister. In Korea, the, even a female president was elected. And Korea has seen many progress in many different areas, but for gender equality, there is a, lo a long way to go. And one of them is economic equality. COVID 19's economic impact, Ukraine's invasion of uh, Russia's invasion of Russia, uh, in Ukraine, is making everyone's life hard, and it is particularly so on the lives of women. Um, the wage gap. That all stems from the wage gap and between different genders. And pandemics exacerbate those kinds of discrimination and put our progress that we made so far a step backwards. Then what can we do to achieve more equal society? We are going to explore the areas that need to be improved upon and through policy establishment and legislation, we will try to improve on this front. And in Britain, the gender equality law encompasses all the different works of life and the LGBT BT plus and the minorities. That law or act did not completely resolve the gender inequality, but at least we have put in place a method to try to ensure gen equality among all different people. Um, if in Korea promotes female participation, then it will contribute to roughly 20 per 12 percent of GDP to Korea. And all these results will help not just the society, but not just women, but entire society. Uh, also, the gender equality and equality across the different walks of life will be ensured through that. Once again, I'd like to congratulate the 2022 Gender Equality Forum, and I hope everyone can make strides together to bring about a better future. 
고맙습니다. 네, 콜린 크룩스 연극 대사님의 축사를 Thank you very much for the congratulatory remarks. Thank you again so much. Just have you mentioned, well, the crisis of pandemic can be very discriminative sometimes, and going beyond gender equality, we're going to achieve a society of equality, and that will have very good effects on everybody to go forward and to achieve gender equality. We would love to have very fruitful discussion here. And we also have this congratulatory remark sent. And now let's listen to the next message. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome. First, please let me begin by expressing my gratitude to the Ministry of Gender Equality and Family for organizing the Third Korea Gender Equality Forum. and for inviting me to offer brief remarks today at this important conference. It is an honor to be here and speak about a topic that is of greatest priority to Canada. It is also a topic that is dear to my heart as a lawyer and as a diplomat. As you know, the theme of this year's Korea Gender Equality Forum is Sustainable Society and Expansion of Women's Engagement in Economic Activities. In a post-pandemic environment characterized by multiple crises that are threatening to roll back some of the progress we have achieved on gender equality in recent years, it is a timely and important topic. Indeed, the world is still recovering from the pandemic, and while the last 30 months have been a difficult period for everyone, it has had a disproportionate impact on women's economic well-being and working lives. In recent years, the world has seen a lot of progress on gender equality and women's economic empowerment, but there is still much progress left to be made. For example, globally, over 2.7 billion women are legally restricted from having the same jobs as men, and 104 countries have laws preventing women from working specific jobs. And while women have won hard-fought social and economic battles, The multiple crises that the world is now dealing with are threatening to roll back some of that progress. I am thinking not only of the pandemic, but also the rising cost of living, the climate emergency, and large-scale conflicts and displacements, among others. So it is important now, more than ever, to maintain our resolve and to ensure that the momentum for women in the workforce and elsewhere is not lost to the effects of the crises we have to contend with. As we work to build back better, women in all their diversity are key to economic recovery. And it is as Canada's acting ambassador to the Republic of Korea that I'm here today to share with you my support in these important efforts and to highlight Canada's long-standing commitment to gender equality and women's economic empowerment. Canada remains engaged and committed to working with international partners to advance gender equality internationally. In fact, gender equality is a core component of Canada's foreign policy, and it is at the heart of our international assistance efforts, as highlighted in our feminist international assistance policy. We have tried to lead by taking concrete action at home. Through the application of Gender-Based Analysis Plus, we ensure that our policies, programs, and initiatives are responsive and inclusive. And to drive economic growth and support women's participation in the workforce, the Government of Canada is making a transformative investment to build a Canada-wide early learning and childcare system. Supporting women and girls to ensure they develop their skills, accede to decision-making positions, and fully take part in the economic growth of their communities is not only the right thing to do, it also makes economic and business sense. It's quite simple. When women are able to develop their full economic potential, economies thrive, and the benefits of growth reach more people. Of course, Canada is not the only country taking action, and many countries have made commendable progress, including the Republic of Korea. 
But at the same time, I think we all recognize that there is, that there is much work left to be done, including in Canada. In Korea, women are highly skilled and educated, yet they are still greatly underrepresented in positions of leadership throughout society, including in business, politics, and the public service. I hope that the discussions we have here today can help us to identify tangible ways to enable greater participation of women across all sectors of society in, Can in Korea, Canada, and around the world. I am confident that today's conference can serve as a tool for all of us as policymakers, leaders, and change agents to identify areas for individual and collective action. Canada looks forward to working closely with Korea alongside our other international partners on our shared goal to advance gender equality and women's economic empowerment around the world. I wish everyone a successful event full of engaging and productive discussions. Thank you. Merci. Gamsa Hamnida. We thank you very much for your message, for your support and insightful message that you shared with us. We would like to um, express our deepest gratitude to you once again. And well, also we could learn from Canada's case. So we have listened to these congratulatory messages from across the world. Now, thanks to them, we can go forward. This year's theme is Women's Economic Empowerment for Sustainable Society here at KGEF. We would like to welcome you all online, and I know that you will be joining us here today to make this event even more fruitful. Now let's go on forward and listen to the first keynote speech. The first keynote speech will be delivered by First Deputy Managing Director Ms. Gita Gopinath. She has shared a recording, a video clip of her speech. Now the theme is Gender Equality Boost Economic growth and stability. Good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to speak to you at the Korea Gender Equality Forum today, even if from afar. Korea has been an important partner to the fund on our gender work and has made important advances in gender equality over the last 10 years. The war in Ukraine, the COVID-19 pandemic, the current food and energy price surge and long-standing factors such as climate change have widened already large gender gaps, disproportionately affecting women's jobs, incomes and security. The World Economic Forum expects that it will now take more than 130 years to close gender gaps worldwide, up from about 100 years before the pandemic. Globally, 64 million women lost their jobs during the pandemic twice as many as men, because women are more likely to work in informal, temporary and part-time jobs, the types of jobs employers tend to cut first in a downturn, with lower pay and less social protection. And an estimated 80% of people displaced by climate change are women. Eliminating gender disparities that hold women back is the right thing to do. Ensuring equality in opportunities and potential to participate in the economy can be catalytic for a faster recovery from recent shocks and a strong engine of growth for more resilient, sustainable and inclusive economies going forward. Gender equality goes hand in hand with macroeconomic and financial stability, can stimulate economic growth, boost private and public sector performance and reduce income inequality. Now this applies to Korea as well, with rapid aging and low birth rates expected to reduce Korea's labor force. Higher female labor force participation is critical to boost economic growth. Despite improvements over the last decade, Korea has some of the largest labor market gender gaps among OECD countries, both in terms of earnings and labor force participation. The gender pay gap, which stood at 32% in 2020, is almost 20 percentage points higher in Korea than the OECD average. And women hold only 16% of managerial positions compared to 32% of comparable countries in 2017. Now, all the women's labor force participation rate has increased 
from 53% to 60% between 2001 and 2021, there is still a gender labor participation gap of 18 percentage points compared to a gap of around 15 percentage points among OECD countries. IMF analysis suggests that if Korea's female labor force participation rose to the same level as male labor force participation by 2035, real GDP would grow by more than 7%. So how can Korea harness the full economic potential of its talented women? Well-designed macroeconomic, structural and financial policies can support efficient and inclusive outcomes and equitably benefit women, girls and society in general. Key measures supported by the fund to increase Korea's female labor force participation have focused on retention and redeployment policies. To incentivize work retention, we have recommended strengthening the quality and affordability of childcare services, promoting shared parent leave, and broader measures to improve work-life balance, including through a reduction in working hours and more flexible working environments, and mitigating labor market duality. Career transition assistance and upskill training targeted to women's needs and tailored to a broader range of sectors and positions can also help. More generally, taking the tax treatment of second earners more neutral and introducing benchmarks for employment and leadership of women by corporations could encourage women, female labor force participation and broaden women's access to leadership positions. The Korean authorities have made important progress on some of these reforms. Korea has expanded parent leave and childcare services, reduced working hours for expecting women, encouraged more equitable sharing of childcare duties between spouses, improved work-life balance, and provided more employment services tailored to women. Korea has also expanded employment insurance coverage to self-employed, freelance, and part-time workers. Since 2005, gender impact assessments have helped ensure that the impact of policies on women is well understood. And since 2010, a gender budgeting system has been an essential tool for designing fiscal policies and frameworks with a gender perspective and reducing gender inequalities. Because even measures that are in principle neutral can ultimately affect men and women differently. The gender policies introduced more recently by the new administration are also welcome. I'm thinking here of expanding parental leave and services with government support and public-private partnerships and supporting women professionals in new digital and high-tech industries. These measures are all expected to provide more opportunities to women. Despite this notable progress, further efforts are needed to prevent labor market and career disengagement given sizable remaining gender gaps. So what are the priorities ahead? Korea should take additional steps to support women's return to the labor force and career engagement. This will require sector-specific training, further improvement in the quality of childcare and public education for early school ages. As some of you may know, our executive board recently approved the first comprehensive IMF strategy for mainstreaming gender. The strategy starts from the premise that gender equality has positive macroeconomic benefits. Conversely, the strategy also recognizes that economic and financial policies affect women and men differently, often unintentionally. Therefore, we now have a framework for integrating gender into the work of the IMF. This includes our economic surveillance and policy advice the design and IMF of supported programs and capacity development such as providing training on topics like gender budgeting. In these ways, we can better support our member countries. We can help them enhance, harness the economic dividends of reduced gender inequality. The IMF has produced research on gender issues for some time, but a systematic approach has never been more urgently needed. Of course, fund staff stand ready to continue supporting Korea. A policy discussion will help, help to identify measures to foster resilience and inclusive growth 
by narrowing gender gaps and improving women's economic empowerment. Our strategy for mainstreaming gender will provide IMF staff with better tools to systematically assess the macroeconomic consequences of gender gaps where they are macrocritical, evaluate the gender differentiated impact of shocks and policies, and provide granular and tailored macroeconomic and financial policy advice. It also recognizes the importance of collaboration with external partners. Now, while the vision of the strategy is ambitious, the timeline for its implementation is expected to be gradual and measured. We will take the time needed to get this right, but we are confident that we will succeed in formulating the right policies and gender issues to be to the, for the benefit of our membership and especially for women. Thank you for inviting me to join this important conversation. I wish you enlightening and fulfilling conversations in the sessions to come. Thank you very much for the wonderful keynote speech addressing gender inequality and how to boost women participation in economy. It was all um, highlighted in her speech. Thank you once again very much for the wonderful keynote speech. Now, based on this keynote speech, we will have a further discussion and insight to share for the sessions to come. Now, let's continue to our next keynote speech. Now, we would like to invite the second speaker of the today. It's President Yi in Shil of Korea Peninsula Population Institute for Future. The theme of her speech is urgent call to expand economic opportunities for women. Please welcome her. Hello, I'm Yihin Shi. As you can see on the back of my business card, there's two posting. One is the director of the Sustainable Society and another is the president of the uh, Korea pre president of the Korea Peninsula Population Institute for Future. Uh, I recently retired from Seogang University as a professor and to make contribution to society, I have to position as the head of the international organization. Most importantly, thank you for inviting me to this gender equality forum. As you can see from the topic, the imperative task, a female economic participation. I am a female economist, so I believe this theme is in line with today's forum. As you already know, the world is still in the wake of the pan global pandemic. And as was mentioned by someone before, the inequality has been exacerbated, especially that is disproportionately affecting female and low-income family. And the topic of the day, the sustainability and the, 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 econo the environment and consolidating with the society and economic growth, all these three themes should go hand in hand. This is the global agenda and gender women's participation is very key to this. As you already know, in 1992, we had, there was a real declaration and we adopted collectively as a world the sustainable economic growth. And in 2006, of course, like since four years after 1992, we established a national plan, but in 2006, we actually came up with a first sustainable growth strategy and implementation plan. And we have now come to the fourth plan. And in 2015, we have adopted 17 sustainable growth targets. And the fifth one is the gender equality. Not just in Korea, but also across the world, the sustainable growth is a global key agenda, but for Korea, it is an imperative and it means death or life or death. That's what I'm going to talk about today. Please take a look at the picture, the slide. 
The female labor force participation rate for Korea is uh, in the mid to high, but you might think that this is not about statistics, but for countries such as Korea, who, which is 10th largest economy in the world, for that country, this is a low participation rate. And especially in Korea, the female participation rate has been growing incrementally. For the past 20 years, the female male participation went down by 1.8%, but for women, it went up 4.5%. And female employment rate was up 7.6%, while that of men went down 2%. So it's... You might say, well, it's good that it has been going up. However, if you look in deeper into it, then there's a long way to go. And especially the gap between the female and male's economic participation is huge. And as you can see from this graph on this slide, economic participation rate amongst the OECD countries, the advanced countries, Male economic participation is on the highest cohort, but for women, it's the mid to lower tier. And especially in Korea, the wage gap between men and women are the lowest amongst the OECD. You will locate us at the very right side of the very right end of the graph, and that number is quite high. So that means we have a long way to go. And the quality of employment is not good either. The, as of 2021, female, the gap between the hourly wage of female and men were 69.8% lower for women. And that was hourly rate. And if, it's, if we think of salary, then it's 64% lower. And the gap is stagnant going through the COVID-19. And female are more likely to be a irregular worker, a low-wage worker. And female are more likely to work for a small company, smaller companies, and as you can see from the graph, they usually, mostly, majority of the women work for a companies with less than 10 people. But the bright side is that it's getting better and better. And the length of employment at one single company is lower, and the working hours are also lower, that shorter. That means more women are working part-time than a full-time. And what hurts the most and what's most severe is that female go through career break. The graph here, the one on top, the on the right side of the slide, the one on top is Korea, and the lower graph is OECD average. The, in 1990s, so for the past 30 years, there is no. It doesn't look like an M shape. They their graph looks a little more like a upside down U shape. But Korea is still very severely M shape. But the the biggest gap in Korea just moved from 25, age of 25 to 30 and afterwards. So Korea, the situation is the most severe in Korea. Then why do Korean women go through a career break? According to the Statistics Agency of Korea, the average 20 average of 2010 and recently the child rearing became a more of a dominant reason nowadays uh, in the past there were more like more of a personal reasons but now uh, the more reasons were that of child rearing and especially women in their 30 to 39 the women's participation rate is the lowest almost lowest in the OECD countries and if we say that women are not being able to work because of child rearing, then there should be more part-time works. However, women's part-time employment rate is also one of the lowest in the OECD. This is 
referred. Uh, this was noted in many different occasions, so we have you've all seen this, I think. Uh, the World Economic Forum's Economic Gap Gender Gap Index. Of the 146 countries, we are ranked 99. That means we are almost at the bottom. And economist, 10-year uh, statistics of the glass ceiling index, which I mean, which collects the economic data for specific areas. Korea has been almost maintaining our bottom status. So, Korea's reality, what is it? The population, the demographics, I actually once was a head of the Korea Statistics Agency, but the working age dwindling is much accelerated and faster than we expected. And uh, our working age population peaked in 2010, and the uh, potential growth rate is plunging than you are expected. And the fertility rate is 0.81, and it was actually went down even further to 0.75 in the second quarter of 2022. So a professor at a certain country, university mentioned that Korea might be the first country to be the disappear on the face of Earth. So due to the diminishing population, our economic growth is also at risk. Uh, as you can see, the cap, if we think of the factors that contribute to economic growth, in, capital input, labor input, and are one of the key things. And despite the increasing number of women taking part in the economic activities, because the entire, as a whole, the working age people are diminishing, we are at a risk and crisis. Across the world, especially advanced countries, are facing low fertility rate and dwindling population. But at least the, their economic, women's economic participation is growing. And that's because the servitization of economy and due to changing the labor market structure, and also there's lots and lots of policies to promote work-life balance for women. And more women, women are entering the high-level postings, both at, at government and uh, businesses. That's... But and the life patterns for both women and men are becoming similar and similar for global countries, other countries, but that is not the case for Korea. The global, we are the deviation from the global norm or global universality. Many different indexes point to the other way. The high-income countries for the past 20 years, they have seen a dramatic change. This was not done by me. It was done by Dupoke. Dupke? I don't know how to pronounce the person properly, but there was a joint study for the past years, uh, including France, Germany, and America, they saw the changes in the fertility, childbirth patterns of the high advanced income, high income countries. But, and there has been changes across the world, but that was more severe and more of the case for the advanced countries and high income countries. And the economists say with the increasing income of women, they tend to give less birth. birth. So they saw adverse correlations, but negative correlations between female and engagement of the work and the uh, childbirth. The reasons being, first, because women with them working, it is more advantageous for them to uh, give birth to a smaller number of child, but give 
a more quality education and care. And the second reason, due to child care, a opportunity cost for women goes up. Those two are the accountable, what's accountable for those, the dramatic change in the in high income countries. But with that empirically, however, that was not really apparent or explicit in the advanced countries. What I, that's what I, my assessment. But the, those countries, oh, actually, it's the DEPCAS analysis that the, uh, the work-life balance was more struck. That's why they, that kind of changes were made. The y-axis are fertility rate, and the x-axis are GDP in this slide, on this slide. So the change, there was a change between this, the, the, it was reversed, the trend was reversed from the negative correlations to the positive correlations. And especially in America, as women study more because of opportunity costs, they tend, used to think that there will be lower birth rates, however, Contrary to what common belief, as time passes from 1980s to 2019, the trend was reversed to positive correlations. But that is not the case for Korea. Despite the continued growth in income, and we are the world's largest, 10th largest country in the world in terms of economy, but our fertility rate is still at the bottom. That is just obvious. Korea's birth rate go, is going down too drastically. Already there are many issues that are being crystallized in policies and we have put aside the uh, gender sensitivity policies and many different efforts were made policy-wide. However, we still have this uniqueness and we are going against the global trend. Then that's why I came to think that why is the Korea's gender equality policies are going in the right direction? Is If not, then why are we still at the bottom at the glass ceiling index and the global gender gap index? I've already written this and uh, captured this in my articles, but the society's com there's no, not yet, common consensus on the right elements. We focus only on the policies and the law, legislation, and budget, but I think we have to address this as a society as a whole and make the society as a gender equal society, not just focus on specific female related issues. So as was mentioned by the first deputy, man, uh, deputy managing director, Gipta Gopinath, IMF announced a gender mainstreaming policy in July and they're going to uh, apply this across the world. And the, that was in, that came in the background that that will help the macroeconomy as a whole. And there has been lots and lots of studies. There's a bar or banner about gender, and there are many statistics or research to back it up. However, if we go back to our reality, then we are making slow progress, and there is social uncertainties, a war, and gender inequality, and all those, the, the climate change and all are impacting women disproportionately and directly. And no advanced countries or mid-income countries have yet to succeed in mitigating the gender gap to 7% or below. But many studies point and suggest that the inequality amongst men and women impedes the economic growth and cause a lot of economic cost. And that was also uh, captured in the IMF's 
report. The attitude towards risk or cooperation are different amongst women and men, and they have different capabilities or perspective in any different areas, including technology. So that will have a positive impact, and they will be making synergies instead of canceling each other out. So there are many microeconomic evidence to back it up. The top line of businesses also gets improved if there are more women on the board of directors. So gender diversity helping micro and macroeconomics is very clear and out there. The evidence are out there. So we Remigating, mitigating the gender gap is a great force and driver behind economic growth. Then what should we do to encourage more women to take part in economic activities? Most important thing is to remove the stop, stopping blocks for women's economic participation. What you see in the graph is that, especially in East Asia, where Korea is located in, the reducing gender gap delivers a huge economic benefit. Of course, that varies per region, but it is going to be very meaningful and material. So by encouraging women to take part in economic activities, we can increase our economy as a whole. And another report by IMF says that uh, the lower half of the gender, lower rank, low ranked gender equal countries, if they can mitigate the gender gap, then their GDPs will grow by 35% on average. And that's because the fourth uh, quarter to fifth of that comes from the added labor force. And a fifth of that comes from a diverse perspective, making contribution to productivity. And that will help the men's wage increase as well, help boost the inc increase of the male's wage as well. And if we the services sector grows bigger than the female work economic anticipation participation will grow even accelerated and that will help with the society as a whole. As a head of the Korean Statistics Agency, what I found was uh, uh, surprising was that single household families are growing at a too fast pace. And female household, uh, head of the household also grew much faster than you might think. And the gender inequality, of course, is still persisting. And the fourth industrial revolution is coming. Uh, Korea is yet to prepare and guard it against that kind of changes. But we are not there yet, but still we see changes occur to society. The number of male taking paternity leave are growing, and number of that for taking flex time, flex working hours are also growing. However, we are still um, not there yet. But what's promising is that from June 2022, an act was established, which called, uh, called a Women's Economic Activity Promotion and Career Interruption Prevention Act was put in place. So far, we have been focusing on helping the women who already experienced career break, but now with the act, we are trying to prevent the women from actually having to take a break for, from their career for child caring. So I think that means a paradigm shift in this front. So I have high hopes, and I am expecting much further changes stemming from this act and change your perspective. Ultimately, I believe that, as you can see from the 
reports or statistics we saw, I believe the policy should promote work-life balance, the discriminative work labor market for a female does not promote women to continue with their work and child rearing. But our policies should take turn and gear towards encouraging women to be able to take care of their child and work at the same time. And that should spread across the society and businesses. And to do that, the policies should be made to support individuals and we need to change the cultural and societal perception as a whole. And thirdly, we need to facilitate an environment that is very promoting the work-life balance. The CEOs I know of are providing these kinds of services, but what's hindering that progress still is that even if they try to put in place that kind of policies, then people are complaining that why do you give that benefits to those who have child or who wants to take a break for child rearing only. And because of that, because of their complaints from those who do not take, who do not have to look after their children, they the companies put in place another policy or rule that gives disadvantage or those for disadvantage when they are a potential well they are a candidate for promotion. So. As I mentioned before, I'm an economist. The world is in very difficult times. The, the un invisible war between America and China, the war between Ukraine and Russia, and pandemic, and energy prices, all these factors are exacerbating the gender gaps. If the world goes into the low growth mode, then everyone fights for a small pie. And if the jobs are focused on manufacturing, then the number of jobs itself will go down. And even with technological disruption, the jobs are becoming polarized. And the female, male participation in economic activities are also going down, which will lead to a smaller number of women taking part in economic participation. If Korea actually goes into the low growth mode, then on top of the low fertility rate, the, there will be too little, too few, few labor force. So it's going to be even harder. But on the positive note, we the dis technological disruption in a artificial intelligence and other high tech. I hope the, we need to make a lot more investment into human talent, especially the female talent, so that Korea doesn't become left behind in the global market. So we are in a life or death moment for economy for the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, President Lee, for the wonderful keynote speech. Well, I'm a working mom, too. Actually, I have two children. I'm here. And, well, I've always thought about work-life balance, and that's why I had so much to take away from the keynote speeches. So, well, we can learn a lot from today's discussion here. Going beyond uh, gender equality, the equality for all would be something that we have to pursue. Again, thank you so much for the wonderful keynote speeches we heard from two speakers this morning. And the theme of this year's forum, Women's Economic Empowerment for Sustainable Society, well, we could have more detailed pictures about the theme from the keynote speeches. Again, thank you so much for the keynote speeches. Now, this brings us to the end of the opening ceremony. We'll take a short break. And the first session.
session will start from 3.30. The theme of the first session will be outcomes and limitations regarding the expansion of women's engagement in economy. So it's going to be a fruitful time, so please be actively participating in that one too. So when the sessions continue, actually, if you leave any questions on our official homepage, we will have a lucky draw event too. So please participate in that one too. Thank you so much. See you soon.